I welcome everyone to Lake Code Weekly Contest 375. Um, my premium still hasn't processed, which is very annoying. But I did remember to register this time. So hopefully I won't run into the same registration issues as the last contest, but it, will st it looks like it st still might take a while for stuff to load. I'm just going to do this in case it's faster. Okay. Uh, let's go from the back. Number two subways contain the same number. I feel like I just merge intervals. Yeah, I just merge intervals together. Yeah, that's fairly straightforward. With I'm just gonna read all problems. Maximum P is that beast. Okay. That seems fairly straightforward. That also seems fairly straightforward. Okay, let's go from the back. Um, wait, okay, so D, um, side, and I, we're gonna, we're gonna do interval merging. Um, Something like that. Okay, I think that's correct. I could just do this with a Fenwick tree. Uh, there's a smarter way, I think. Uh, there might be a smarter way, but I'm just going to use a Fenwick tree. Uh, that is not what I wanted. Okay, we're just gonna go here and we're gonna use my Fenwick tree template. Um, how big does this need to be? Oh. Let's say n plus one. Um,
Okay, I think that's correct, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm just going to submit that. Okay. Is it a... What's the syntax? Is it how to... I think it's I forgot. Is the mod in the Okay the mod is the last parameter I forgot. Last one. Okay, so for each one, if that is greater than zero, um, then we increment the count, and then we want to say for every in this range, um, bj is equal to max is equal to bj to one return. Okay, ac, 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 ac. Nice. Okay, I can't believe I had to say, I couldn't remember whether the mod was the second or third argument. In retrospect, it doesn't make sense as the third argument. Um, okay, that wasn't the fastest, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, I guess I'll go through the solutions. This question is very straightforward. You just do exactly what it says. For each one in order from left to right, if the battery is positive, increment the count, and for each one uh, after it, you decrement the count and take the max of zero. It's just implement the formula. Um, this is n squared. You can do in better than n squared by keeping like a running, you can keep a running, like a running counter type thing, but it's uh, like a different summary type thing, but it's very annoying. But you can do this in order n. This question is fairly straightforward. It's just, do you know how to do mod exponentiation? So here, uh, Python has this inbuilt power function, which raises one number to the power of another. And the third argument is it takes its mod. And specifically, you can it, it can perform like x to the power of y mod m in order log m, no, order log y time using some binary exponentiation algorithm. Here, like because a, b, and c are so small, it's you don't even need to do this. You can actually just do the naive. Um, you should you can do just compute the powers naively, provided that you remember to take the modular after every multiplication. Um, so like you could, you could, I mean, what I mean is you could implement your own power function like this. And like, like that. Um, this would work as well. You just have to remember to take the mod after every step. Otherwise you might get integer overflow. Um, Okay, I think there's a much better way to do this problem, but I've just kind of done it. I've done it in a very like, mm, I, I, I don't like the way which I've done this, but I couldn't think of a better way immediately. So basically like, for like uh, each position, 
roughly each position i i guess let's current i be the number of elements at index at most so in the in the prefix up to position up to index i um let current i be the number of elements e equal to the equal to the max of nums then like uh, for for some for some subarray spanning indices l up to r, you can show that current r take current l take one equals the count of of max nums in, in this subarray. Uh, this is true because it's a fairly straightforward prefix sum. Hopefully that makes sense. It's basically like construct another array where there's a one for each element which is equal to the max and is zero for every other element which is not equal to the max. If you calculate the prefix, then current i is pretty much the prefix sum array of that. And so obviously if you take the difference of two values in a prefix sum array, you get the count in a sum subarray. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. So now I've reduced the problem to do, I guess count, count indices, and I can actually shift this up by one like this. Um, so, so now I can, now I just have to find count indices, um, I guess count, count pairs X and Y with current Y take current X greater than or equal to K. And I just use this using a Fenwick tree, <laughs> um, because look, like for, for a given, for, if I fix Y, for example, now I just need to count current X less than or equal to current Y subtract K. Is that correct? Yeah. I think that's correct. Um, yeah, so for here, current is just the current count, the prefix sum count. And yeah, I just calculate my favorite trick. How many elements have I seen so far, which are at most current y take k? And then I add one at my current current value so I can maintain, maintain these frequencies. I think there's definitely a better way, but this is the way I thought of first. Uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know how you're supposed to do this. I know this is not intended because there's no way a family trick is intended in question three. But I couldn't think of anything else. Okay, here's this is the final question, and I thought it was pretty simple actually. It's that the main idea is if you look here, um, because there's a one in in index zero and there's a one in index two, there can't be any splits in between here, like. And a subarray can't end like somewhere between this. Like this one, two, and one block needs to stay together. Now, say for example, we had like a list like one, two, one, two. Because of these two ones, like these three elements must be in the same subarray. And because of these twos, these three elements must be in the same subarray. And therefore the entire thing must be in the same subarray. So we can kind of use this idea. It's just for every distinct element, we find I guess it's earliest index and last index in the list. And this kind of forms some intervals. And then when two intervals overlap, we merge those intervals. Because if this interval has to stay together and an overlapping interval has to stay together, then the union of these intervals must stay together. So that's simply all I do. Like, uh, like say we have something like this. The ones, get, the ones interval gets merged with the twos interval and forms this interval. The threes interval gets merged with the fours interval and forms this interval, and then the fives form another interval. So in the end, we kind of have three intervals that we have to work with. And now the like these three, I guess subarrays, these three intervals must stay together. And the only question is whether we combine these intervals into something bigger, or, like if we combine these intervals into one bigger subarray or not. And let's say that there's x intervals, like after doing the merging stuff, um, it can you can show pretty easily that the answer is two to the power of x take one. That's because, like, if you have x different into let's say we have like x intervals, like one, two, three, four up to x, um, like this. I then for I guess each space between the intervals, you can you have two decisions. Either you you keep like a divider there and make sure that this and like this are separate subarrays. Or if we remove this and this kind of acts as this, uh, then we'll be merging them into a bigger subarray. It's just like for each adjacent pair, we have a decision of whether we merge them into the same subarray or not. 
and each of these decisions are independent. So the answer is to the power of x take one. So all I do here is just implement this. Here on D, for each for each unique uh, element in the array, I store the list of the indexes in which it appears, and then I calculate the minimum and maximum of each of these groups, and that gives me these intervals. Then I just run this standard interval merging algorithm, and whenever I find a new interval, I multiply the answer by two because of this. And this have this definitely this gives exactly like this calculates um this this step happens exactly x take one times because here I only multiply um yeah like I'm not going to really explain this code because it's very standard interval merging but pretty much you process intervals from left to right um sorted and then for a current interval if the like we have a current interval and then we process a new interval if the new interval intersects with the old interval we kind of merge those intervals together otherwise um we have a separate interval and then we multiply the answer by two and replace the current interval with our new interval okay let's just look at um the rankings okay it looks like i won on the us side 803 let me check the china leaderboard Oh, nice. I won on the China leaderboard as well um, by 14 seconds, which isn't a big margin, but it's still a win. Okay, two, two Lico US wins back to back on my return. I'm very happy with that. Anyway, I hope to see you guys next week and thank you so much for watching. Ooh, remix, maybe 3000 rating. All right, see you guys.